Two expansion teams joined the NWSL this year. Bay FC have made headlines for fancy signings, but the Utah Royals have yet to make any headlines. So how did they win against a very good-looking North Carolina team, and did they have what it takes to be the dark horse for the Shield or the championship? My name's Bridie O'Toole, former player, current fan, and I love to watch film, so let's go see what it's telling us. Starting off with the lineups, we've got Utah in a 4-3-3, very young team, including their international players, who are so young they probably won't be at the Olympics. North Carolina, also in a 4-3-3, but a more defensive flavor of this. We'll see Minaka and Narumi at the She Believes Cup, also the Olympics. We'll see Rao at the Olympics, and also Casey Murphy for the U.S. Starting off in Utah's defensive third, and they're showing a really nice shape here with the center back supporting the goalkeeper, and the left back and the right back out wide to open up the space. They're going to play this ball short because they really want to prioritize possession, and then this pass to the wing helps open up North Carolina's compact shape. But North Carolina wants to control the midfield, they win that ball back, and start connecting some small passes to see where is the press, where is the space. All game long, their game plan was to work this ball up the right-hand side here. So they're really trying to figure out where is the space, can we move up here. Have a little bit of success until they run into more pressure. And then Ashley Sanchez says, I don't want to risk losing this ball. So they pass it back and forth a little bit more. And then this pass makes something happen by being a little bit more central compared to before. It opens up some space. They're able to make progress up this right wing, just like they planned. And now they get a pretty nice cross out of it. Utah recovering nicely into their defensive positions. And then because Utah's recovered nicely, it's actually a forward that makes that clearance. So both teams demonstrating a lot of discipline in their positioning. We could tell that this is going to be a possession-focused game decided by fine margins. In a close game, one tactical tool you can turn to is set pieces. I'm going to play this once in real time, and then we'll slow it down to see how Utah made it happen. Looks like a really easy goal. North Carolina is in a mixed coverage. These players are in zone, and these players are in man coverage. So there's an opportunity if you're one of these two players, to potentially leave the zone, and as long as one of these players in the man coverage doesn't notice, you would be open and not picked up. Utah, as soon as they make the play call, this player is going to drop back to the very edge of the zone. At the same time, these players are going to bust up through the middle and create some misdirection. This defender and the goalie are both going to be very focused on that misdirection. So here we see the players start dropping back. Everybody starts moving into the middle. And our goalie and a defender are looking the wrong way until the last second. And Utah makes that look very easy through a well-designed set piece. And honestly, I'm not surprised they scored their first ever goal on a set piece because I noticed this in their game last week. This setup looks like it's going to be a long kick. And once she has her head down, this player here starts moving forward, dragging this girl out of the zone. It creates some open space, and we're going to see a Utah player that's off screen hustle down into that zone. So there we go, lots of movement, lots of empty space. And they don't get anything out of this one, but it's nine minutes into the game, and they're using a fairly well-designed set piece. It just made me feel that they're committed to practicing these set pieces, and they're committed to executing them well on games to help create a difference for them. Back to the game so we can see how North Carolina responds to being down a goal. Utah showing that same shape they did at the beginning. And because of that, North Carolina is going to adapt, and they're going to bring their pressure up a lot higher right there forces the goalkeeper to kick it away, and now they're coming in to compete for the loose ball. Able to connect on some passes. And it's looking like good progress until Minaka's fouled. A few minutes later, and we see North Carolina building again. The defender does a nice job here, gets her head up, finds Ashley Sanchez in space, relieves the pressure by passing it off, and now some space is opened up here on the left wing. Utah recovering nicely. We see their defensive formation looks good, and because of that, they're able to clear the ball out. And then with this touch, it gets cleared all the way upfield. 
the North Carolina takes that back, starts again. Very patient here, looking to combine and create, and they're really starting to get a feel for Utah's press. They're understanding when they're pressing, where they're pressing, and they're able to create a lot more movement out of Utah, connect and combine on a lot more passes, but still very patient, very possession focused, and if they don't like the look, they're just gonna tee it up again. So here they go, all the way back. What can we find? continuing to pass, create some movement out of that Utah team. And that's a great find there. Utah recovering very nicely, not pulling too much to the wing, focused on defending the goal mouth, but great goal from Ashley Sanchez. And this one's a little bit unfortunate because Utah does recover very nicely, but this just comes down to individual player error. She's going to get a foot on it, but just not enough of a clearance. Falls right to Ashley Sanchez, and she does a really good job with her body positioning to just kind of contort herself to put that in the net. Fantastic volley. Really cool goal. Love to see that for them. But Utah doesn't show any signs of panicking, and they stick to their game plan. So they're going to continue working the ball up the right wing, like we've seen them do, looking to possess, trying to connect on passes, and North Carolina is still in a pretty nice defensive shape, recovering very well. They clear that ball out, and then this pass is fantastic, consumes a lot of space, and now all of a sudden, North Carolina have a very threatening-looking buildup again. But Utah, not panicking, committing to the press that they've been running on that right wing the whole time. And then this play, for me, is so highly intelligent by Ali Sentinel, the rookie. She recognizes all this space that has been vacated, and she's going to consume as much of that space as quickly as possible. I love how she has her head up the entire time. She's collecting a lot of information, and about here, she puts her head down because she's collected enough information. She's seen that this player is double covered and not going to be a good option, so she's committed to taking a shot. In order to make that happen, she's going to push the ball out wide just a tiny bit to create a little bit more separation, and then she absolutely unloads. What a first goal for your senior career. Absolutely phenomenal, and no expectation on the goalie to save that. It's just you, you do not expect that rocket to be coming your way from there. In response, North Carolina is going to look even more cautious. So they're testing Utah here. If we pass it back to the goalkeeper, are they going to come and press? No. All right, well, what if we dribble into them? Are they going to come and press? No. So I really like what North Carolina is going to do here. They've been exploring this very slowly, and all of a sudden they're going to have a very quick change of pace that's going to open things up for them. So look, yeah, all of a sudden, a lot more pace more intensity, moving the ball up nice and fast, and they're having some success on this right wing like they wanted, right? That little fake inside opened it up just a little bit, and then great clearance by Utah being in position, and you know, love to see this from Pogarch. Made an error earlier, don't let it impact you, continue doing your thing. North Carolina remains really committed to the high press and do a great job here impacting the ball, winning the space before the ball, dishing it off, and Utah absolutely have to commit that foul. There's a few really great things happening here. Manaka does a great job winning the space before she wins the ball. See what that looks like. Steps into it, and then now with her strength, she's shielding off this defender. Narumi picks that up, and she's going to play a fantastic pass. All of her body language is saying forward, and she just slips it with the outside of her foot into space here. And look at this shape from Utah. They're in such a tight box, and everybody is facing the same direction. So they absolutely have to commit that foul. That's the only time we really see them in such a poor defensive shape. Referee points to the spot, but the penalty has to be taken twice. Uh, we'll look at the overhead cam to see why. So... Goalie Mandy Hot has to keep both her feet either on or behind the line before the kick is taken. And we're going to see her step up just a little bit early, which is very, very lucky because that is missed. Hits the post. North Carolina gets a second chance here. 
same kick taker, and that's saved with her legs. It's a very awkward save, but this penalty does not have enough power on it. It's not placed well enough, and because of that, Hawk gets out with her legs, scrambles there. And Utah got out of that situation very nicely. North Carolina not changing their game plan, showing a lot of determination and still a, a very intense press 70 minutes in when players are starting to get tired. So not straying away from their game plan. You see Utah doing the same thing, still working up that sideline. North Carolina, though, in a nice defensive shape, able to get that first clearance. Look at the power on that header. That is some heading form right there. Fantastic. And then challenging for that second ball. North Carolina, right, still wanting to possess. Still being cautious, looking for the right option. But they're eager to move upfield. And they move very, very quickly here. And this is a fantastic pass from Ashley Sanchez. Through ball into space. What a great looking chance they have here, but just thrown away. I think Manaka does a very nice job with her run. She knows that she's not being picked up and she's, you know, not too eager to bust up here, not too eager to cut in, just really hanging out in the space that they're giving her. And it's such a shame that she never picks her head up. We saw Ali Sentinel dribbling the entire way with her head up. And what a difference that makes because she just doesn't even see. And it's a complete waste of the ball. North Carolina is starting to look like a problem. So in response, Utah changes their shape, goes for something more defensive. We're not going to see either of these two players cross this line. Everybody's just going to sit a lot further back. And if we look at the back line, now we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we've pulled a midfielder in there to give us an extra player. North Carolina, though, still doing their thing, and they're still going to find tiny little pockets of space. Utah, though, really just hustling now. It's choppy, but they're just fighting for this win. Good clearance. But look at this. This is a defender. She stepped all the way up. I don't know why we're hanging out here waiting for our third goal, but she's got time. She's got space. And what a shot. Great save. And that there just won the game for Utah. So I think both teams look really highly coached. I was very impressed with both of them. I think North Carolina is going to be a real contender this season, especially if they're able to get Caroline back for some firepower up front. But Utah just seemed very disciplined, very coordinated, and if they continue to get better throughout the season, I wouldn't be surprised to see them walk away with some hardware. All right, let's go talk about some non-football things. I continue to be really impressed by the comments you guys are leaving, and I love the community we're building here. It makes me so happy when folks that are newer reach out to talk about how they're learning about the game. I hope you fall in love with it just as much as I have. And then some of you really know your stuff. You pointed out Ava Gatino, Tabitha Chawinga. Both had amazing games at PSG, so it was very cool to see you all predicting the future there. Uh, the other thing is I've been poking around in my video analytics a little bit, trying to understand how I can improve the content. And I can see that some of you have started sharing the videos externally on places like Reddit and Facebook. I'm not a big self-promotion person, and this process is helping me improve my confidence a little bit. So I want to say thank you so much for doing that. It means a lot to me, and I'm just very committed to improving the quality of these videos overall. So thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.